Hey viewers, uh, so a couple of days ago a good friend of mine asked me to uh, check and sell uh, some of his hi-fi equipment and um, this was part of it. Uh, this is an Arcam Alpha 6 CD player from circa mid 90s and um, yeah they still sell for a reasonable amount of money on eBay to be honest, I was, I was, a, bit, I was a bit surprised. Um, so anyway yeah he asked me to check it over and then sell it on eBay for him. Uh, so the first thing I did was uh, power it on uh, and try and test it. Um, so yeah, I powered it on, uh, pressed the eject button and it didn't eject. It made loads of grunching noises. Now I've, I've actually already opened up, I know what the problem is. Um, it's quite a common fault on these. There is a, a drive gear which ejects the CD mechanism out so you can put a CD in and the plastic just goes brittle and breaks and that is exactly what's happened here. So I'm going to uh, take the lid off, I'll show you what the problem is and then I'll just detail through how to actually fix it. Right, so let's just quickly run over what components we have in here. So there's a PCB on the base, um, looks like the main control unit and we've also got power supply, we've got an old old style linear transformer there. Um, obviously um, 230 volts, it means it's um, obviously fixed for 230. Whether there's jumpers and things to change that, I don't know. Um, we've got quite a, quite a lot of uh, electrolytic capacitors, given that they're um, getting on a bit, they could probably do with changing, but it seems fine for the moment. So none of them are swollen or anything like that. So they're probably best just left as they are until something goes bad. Um, on the top here, we've got um, DAC PCB, so that's obviously doing the digital to analog conversion, and then out to the back. Um, and yeah, there's probably more control logic underneath that. So what we need to look at is the CD mechanism. So I'll just whiz this round so I can actually show you. Uh, so here we can see the CD section. There is a small motor over here which actually provides the tray eject and load function. Um, there's a, I can see a small um, rubber belt drive and a gear wheel and it, that is where our problem lies. Um, if I try and eject, you see it doesn't really do anything and it, I don't think it's really attached to the gear at all to be honest because inside the case um, when I opened this up I found all the teeth from the gear so um, that's obviously uh, what the problem is, the teeth have just been ripped off, uh, broken off because uh, they've gone brittle so we need to take out the CD mechanism so we can get to the underneath of it and change over that drive wheel. Let's take the front panel off. And then the one at the back. Okay, so here we can see the motor, the drive belt, and the uh, the drive wheel. Uh, uh, looks like we've just got a plate here with two torques on it. Those are T10s. Let's just take this off. broken gear wheel that does actually feel pretty stiff on there so I think we'll give that a clean up and grease it up again and the drive belt looks in looks in good condition but we've got a new one anyway so we can put that on so I'll just clean off all the old grease so I have my new drive gear here um, these are you can easily pick those, these up on eBay. They're about twelve pounds. They're probably just a, uh, a copy, a copy of these. Yeah. Right, that's the new gear installed on there with a tiny little bit of oil, and yeah, spinning much freely, much more freely than it did before. So yeah, definite improvement. So 
We just need to take our new belt, pop it over the motor, screws back in. Right, so I've just pulled the drawer out. Uh, I'm just going to have a look in here, check, make sure there's no bits of the gears, which there is, a tiny little bit there. All the gears on here look fine, so I think we're good to go. I might um, just put a tad a tiny little bit of um, grease on those gears. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just, um, before I finish uh, reassembling this, I'm just going to power it on and uh, make sure it all works. Well, that looks pretty good so far. Let's put a CD in and we'll see whether it plays discs okay. I have actually tried this already. Uh, I manually loaded a disc in without the drive, without the loading mechanism work, but I just want to double check it now. Um, so, yeah, I've had to go, go for a rummage in my old CDs and... Uh, you can't go wrong with Orbital, can you? Uh, what button was play? There's a question. Play, is that one? Previous next. I need to plug um, some headphones or something into this so I can actually listen to it, but I'm sure if it's getting this far, it should be fine. Right, so I'll finish off uh, reassembling this. I'll probably give the um, glass on the vacuum fluorescent display a clean because they always attract dust um, and probably clean the backside of the plastic as well. Uh, because you often find those VFD displays, because they work at a high voltage, they tend to attract the dust a bit, so yeah, there's uh, definitely some dust in there that needs cleaning off, so uh, always good. So when you've got something open like this, it's always a good opportunity to um, give it a clean. So it's all fixed, all back together, it's all working perfectly. Um, saved a, uh, a nice CD player from a simple little fault with a broken gear wheel. I hope you found this interesting and useful. So uh, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.